Welcome to our um, <clears throat> first annual revival. Um, we're going to open with a prayer. Thank you, Jesus, and worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you now. We come before you, Lord, humble and meek, Lord. And we ask for your intervention in our world, in our lives, in our families, in our homes, in our whole surroundings, Lord. Come in, Lord. Make a difference. Make a change, Lord. Put the blood of Jesus over our doors and over our hearts, Lord. Protect us with the full armor of God, Lord. Let us mount up on eagle wings, Lord. Let us become who you want us to become, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Cover us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Get us through what we have to go through, Lord. Let, let the enemy flee, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let the enemy flee from our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Let us overcome the perils of this world, Lord, through our consciousness, through the elevation of our consciousness, Lord. Let everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, understand the importance of overcoming spiritual warfare spiritually before we can ever overcome it physically, Lord. Let this word be edifying to your saints and edifying to myself, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> So today we're talking about spiritual warfare and how um, how the righteous how to come to overcome spiritual warfare righteously, right? Because um, spiritual warfare is so heavy, right? It is so heavy on um, the righteous or even anyone who is trying to walk the righteous walk of Christ, right? Spiritual warfare comes is like this sick mindset that turns everything upside down. People operating way outside of purity, right? Like no good intentions, like loss due to being overcome by darkness, right? So how does the righteous fight against that, especially in all purity as you continue to grow in Christ, you more easily recognize fleshly behaviors, right? You you easily recognize evil intentions. Um, when you are operating in the spirit and you're walking in the spirit of God and you're trying to pursue righteousness this is when it seems like the enemy is coming after you but it's not really the enemy is coming after you it's just that you recognize it more easily because it goes against your spirit your spirit rejects that type of energy unless you go so you can either reject it and and continue to to try to understand it or you can get caught up in it but there is this um it is this like weird um, junction between resisting the enemy and being sucked into the enemy, right? So this is what we're talking about today. This is what we're talking about. And it's a very complex, complex um, subject, but we're going to get through it. We're going to give you, um, God, the Holy Spirit is going to give us some understanding, some enlightenment to get us to a different level of consciousness consciousness in regards to this moment these because spiritual warfare it is abound it is abound everywhere in the world right now so this message it is very important so if you come across this message please share it with your um share it and and you know like get the word out in regards to spiritual warfare right so we're gonna start um let's just talk about spiritual warfare some more right so the perils of this world nothingness there is a, a place of um, desolation in our spirit, in this world, in our existence where there is nothingness. There is no abundance. There is no looking forward to anything. There is no hope, right? And in that place, spiritual warfare dwells. And in that place within us, spiritual warfare dwells, right? So we always have to look to the hills which come with our help. We always have to have a relationship with God that frees us from the bondage of this world. So um, prayers against the enemy, we are in the middle of spiritual warfare. There is a depth of spiritual death that encompasses complete darkness, right? There is a depth of spiritual death, right? When you allow your spirit to die so much, when you allow your spirit to be under so much um, unrighteous, just un not unrighteous, but in so much, so many things that are spiritual 
warfare that that breeds spiritual warfare the works of the flesh if you allow yourself to exist and dwell in the works of the flesh operate operate by the works of the flesh and communicate in the works of the flesh then you are overcome by darkness you you experience spiritual death every time you get involved in something that is ungodly right in regards to the energy that people are putting out the energy that you are allowing yourself to put out because understand we are switching our language from a physical understanding to a spiritual understanding of biblical scripture and its instructions right so today we are reading so it's complete darkness there are evils unseen working in the dark of the night i feel it so heavy right i feel it heavy um in my spirit and we all can um we, can, we all can take our individual walks down our spiritual path of the um illusion of wholeness right we all have these different spiritual practices whether it's meditation prayer ignoring people closing the door whatever it is right we all have our way of coping with spiritual warfare however um or we can understand that it's not about us only right we have to understand that the spiritual warfare is not only about us right so we have our different ways of coping with it going into our prayer closet removing ourselves from society shutting down our social media whatever it is right but we have to understand that there is um a bigger picture there is a bigger fight that is not just us right and and if we ignore that fight then we perish also right so we have to understand that we have um not just our that we perish right so it's not about us only we exist as a part of a world with children and loved ones and even um they will keep going on so even everything will keep going on but the curse to break is on your lineage but your lineage have to exist in a world with others who are operating under a cursed mindset now i know it's not feasible to say we can change the world in a generation but it is possible for us to change ourselves right we are able to change ourselves so that is what the revival is about um this weekend it's about changing ourselves changing our mindset so that we can be available to to help fight against the spiritual enemy so that we can be um in a place in a mindset of purity in which god can speak to us to give us direction right in which we can um calm others down when they're being inhabited by a spirit of darkness so um we have to change ourselves right so today we are reading out of psalms 37 1 through 11 um and psalms 35 17 17 through 21 um just to get an idea of how spiritual warfare manifests and and how it feels and and what we can do about it right so psalm 37 7 psalm 35 17 through 21 reads lord how long will thou look on rescue my soul from their destructions my darling from the lions right so we all exist in this world where it's a lot going on a lot of spiritual warfare demonic forces jumping from one person to the next trying to mess up our day our mind our spirit right but we have to understand that um, spiritual warfare, there's two sides to every coin, right? So there is what is happening and then there's our reaction to what is happening. So um, when, we are, when we are trying to overcome spiritual warfare, it is hard to overcome it in the flesh. In that moment, we feel like this prayer. We feel like, Lord, how long would thou look on? Rescue my soul from the destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in great congregation. I will praise thee among much people, right? So when we are walking in Christ, we are waiting for Christ to come. We are waiting for God to show up and, and change things and just miraculously like change the hearts of the people who are coming up against us. But we have to understand there is a spirit working in those individuals. There is a spirit working in those individuals that can only be conquered through the spirit of Christ, through a Holy Spirit. So our response must be holy, right? So we have to work on ourselves. We have to get ourselves together to be able to respond in the holiest way possible. Right? So to know God is to want the salvation of Christ, to labor for the salvation of the world, lest we all perish, to seek the understanding of Jesus' words so earnestly. So um, I so 
Because, you know, like, even me, like, even I have questions about am I right, am I wrong, um, and when there's spiritual warfare happening, right? Because we have to assess our own behaviors. Because I'm telling you guys to look at um, yourselves, right, in regards to spiritual warfare. But you will begin to question yourself and your own, um, not only will you question your righteous walk, but you will question your righteousness, right? So, um, and then you would, like, tr start to feel like people are taking advantage of you and, and people are not, like, you know, treating you right. And you are, like, but there's instructions given to us in, by, in, in the scripture based on um, God's plan. God's plan for humanity. And we have to, um, we have to walk the p path of righteousness for God's plan to come about. So that's why we are living sacrifices. But there is a comforter for those who are walking in righteousness that we sometimes don't get to because we are so busy trying to fight in the flesh, right? We are trying to fight against flesh and blood and not against powers and principalities in high places, right? We are not fighting against local powers and principalities. We are fighting against powers and principalities in high places, powers and principalities that, have, that has been conjured up to go against society, to... Um, to work in the favor, favor of those who are evil, those who are unrighteous, those who want to see others suffer for their own selfish gain, right? So that is where the um, powers and principalities is coming from. However, we have to understand those powers and principalities are working in the earthly realm, jumping into other people, people that we love, people that we are close to, right? So right now we are in this... Um, this junction, right? We are in this, and in regards to spiritual warfare, right? Uh, in regards to those who go against the teachings of Jesus Christ, those who refuse the salvation of Jesus Christ. We are in this junction of tell them, tell them about the salvation, tell them that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. And then we are in this other place where it's um, dust off your feet and count it as a testimony to Jesus Christ. And then we're at this place where we're like, let the dead bury the dead. So we're all like operating out of this same junction, right? But we have to understand that salvation is for the all. We are living sacrifices. We have been sent here to do a work. We, um, and he who begins a good work in us, we will see it completed to the day of Christ. So right now, um, we are in the process of, laboring right we are laboring for the for christ this generation is laboring for the salvation of christ and the spiritual warfare thank you holy spirit so the spiritual warfare that is coming up against us it is either going to um, move us in a more righteous direction or we're going to get sucked up sucked up into it right so we have to understand to take spiritual warfare as a lesson of moving you in a direction of more righteousness, right? So we would look in scripture, how do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? And then um, it would lead you into a place of seeking the answers in a Christ conscience, right? So Lord, how long would I look on, rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions? I will give these thanks in the great congregation. We have faith in God. We have faith that God will come through for us, right? And we are planning to give God all the praise and all the honor that he deserves for coming to our aid when we need him, right? So I will give thee thanks in great congregation. I will praise thee among much people, right? So we know that, and then God comes in, right? He gives us a little bit of relief. He gives us, like, he takes care of this problem and he takes care of that problem in our lives, right? And, and, and when in your life, when you are serving God, when you are serving Christ, he takes care of the, the immediate needs around you. But we still have, um, when you are in the spirit, and when you are re resisting the flesh, you are notified and you are aware of the spiritual warfare on earth. You are you know what's going on around you um, without even being in it, right? You can feel it. So, so it's not about what goes on around you that is affecting you. It's about what's going on in the world that is affecting you because you have been called to a mission to do something to do something about it. And understand, we have all been called to a mission to do something about it because that is why we are. Here, that's why we have been created. There is something within us that holds the answer that will bring um, peace and provision and love and and prosperity to society. But we have um, we haven't been able to tap into it because we are being led by the flesh. 
So in, in being led by the flesh, you will be conquered by the flesh if you do not conquer your flesh through the growth of your spirit, right? So understand that spiritual warfare comes up against your flesh, but it also leads you in the direction to grow your spirit, right? To be more accommodating to the will of God, to not get caught up in the warfare that is going on in the world, world to, to remain set apart. So let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. So in righteousness, right, in righteousness, you can see people plotting against you. You can see people trying to bring harm to you um, because of, you know, spiritual warfare, jealousy, whatever, whatever's going on, right? Because they are so caught up in darkness that they are unable to see the light, right? And you try to show them the light, but they don't want to see the light. They would like to stay in darkness. So um, you, you understand, you see, right? So we talked about in the spirit of God, you are easily able to see the flesh at work. You are able, you are easily able to see when someone is being overcome by the flesh. Like when Jesus was at the table and he saw the devil go into Judas Iscariot, he knew that it was a spirit change. It was a, it was a different, it wasn't of God, right? Whatever he was going through, whatever he was thinking about, however he was looking when he was sitting there, it wasn't of God. So we see this and we notice this the more that we walk with God, but then we don't know really how to fight against it. So we're going to talk about that in Psalm 37, 111, but let's continue to read, right? So let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. So one of the abominations that God hates is a mind that, that, um, that forms like a plan, a deceitful plan, right? God doesn't like, that's an abomination. To sit there and plan how to um, do something evil is an abomination. So um, that will, that, that, that's not good, right? So there's consequences for that. So I will give the, um, for they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land, right? So people and, and situations and, and, Spirits of that are not of peace, right? That not that don't speak peace, that don't seek peace, that is operating in the darkness of spirit. And understand that a spirit that is art that is operating in a darkness of spirit doesn't see peace. They don't see peace. They don't see light. They don't see because they can't see through the darkness. That's why the salvation of Jesus Christ is so important for the world. Because through the eyes of, of purity. You see things different. You operate different. You do things different, right? But for the world to be so overcome with darkness, they are not only able, un, un, they are also unable to see why Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light, right? You are only able to see it once you surrender to the process. Okay, so for they speak not peace, but they divide deceitful matter against them that are quiet in the land. Yeah, yay, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, our eye has seen it, right? So aha, aha is a heart posture of trying to prove a point in unrighteousness, trying to catch people up in something that is like so evil and desolate and sad. It's ridiculous because our mindset, our heart posture, our conscience should be on improving the world and improving the lives of each other, right? And when we are not in that mindset, we are operating and we are available to for the devil, for Satan to work through us. And this is how spiritual warfare comes about. So we're going to go to Psalm 37, 1 through 11. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of inequity. So scripture says that those who have their reward has gotten their reward on earth. Monetary gain, um, wealth of the earth world is not something that we should be in competition for, right? A good name is what we should be in competition for. Making a difference in this generation is what we should be competition for because that is what's going to change the next generation. That is what's going to help the next generation. That is might be what saved this generation, right? Um, because we just... I mean, like, we have to take a look around us and see what's going on in the world. If the people do not stand up, if people do not stand up and stand up for what's right, we will all perish. Like, and it's not even worth it. It's not right for people, innocent people, to suffer because of evil on earth. So, um, so don't be envious against the workers of inequity. Don't be, you know, just know, recognize and know 
that those who are operating outside of the will of God are not um, going to, you know, it's not going to be good for them. And, and they can't come up against you because you are in the will of God, right? So pursuing the understanding of Jesus Christ, pursuing a God-like spirit, pursuing knowledge of God is putting you in a position to fight against the enemy. Because when the enemy comes up against you, you go into your scripture. You go, you Google, what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about that? And you figure it out and you follow it and you put it on your heart. And that is what guides you and grows you in God. That is what guides you and grows you in Christ. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb, right? So like, like I said, spiritual warfare is overcoming. It is overcoming dark. I mean, it is... Um, it is darkness that overcomes society, that overcomes people in their mind and their heart, right? And then we can, once you are so down in darkness, you can't come up, right? So you're consumed by the darkness. You're consumed by society and their ways. You, There's no freedom, right? So um, the salvation of Jesus Christ being preached, being taught, being held on to, being um, a part of who we are is how, how society comes into the, the grace of God, the mercy of Jesus Christ, the, the, the whole situation, right? A level of consciousness, a level of consciousness will free us. A level of understanding of recognizing what is going on and how to properly react to it will free us. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So understand that grass needs water to grow. Grass needs water. And we know that water represents spirit. If the grass is not watered properly, it would wither and die, right? So we need spirit to live. We need spirit to grow. We need spirit to exist because we are a spirit in a body. So the more we ignore our spirit, the more we are consumed by spiritual warfare because then we are operating in the flesh. So trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and bury, verily thou shalt be fed, right? So fed spiritually, fed physically, our needs and our basic provision met. But when you, when you read scripture, when you dwell in the land of the holy, when you dwell in the spirit of God, when you pursue the teachings of Jesus Christ, you are fed spiritually. Man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of God, because man is actually a spirit in a body. We need the word of God to, to be alive, to be lively, to, to overcome, because spiritual warfare manifests in a way that cannot be fought against through flesh and through blood. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily shalt thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and shall give, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Right. So we need to stop paying attention to everything that is going on around us, and um, when we stop doing that, we have more spiritual conscience. Right. When we are not caught up in everything that is happening immediately in front of us, and we take the time to sit with God and worship God and pray to God, some things will manifest in our spirit that are not. That is not, um, you know, appealing to us. It's not something we want to feel, something we want to go through. But when we open up our scripture during that, that, those times, we have a way of reacting to it that will bring about the power of God, that will bring about the, um, the salvation of Jesus Christ. If we open our Bible in spiritual warfare, if we Google what's how to react to this, how to react to that, if we continue to read our Bibles, the Holy Spirit will bring back scriptures that will comfort us in those times right that will give us the insight and understanding that we need to go forward in the righteousness in which god wants us to go in that is why scripture and prayer and worship is so important especially reading the bible because we have our basic instructions right but then there's another instructions there's further instructions that's given to us by the holy spirit once we have come into an understanding of the importance of our basic instructions so trust in the Lord and do good, do good. When we do good, when we do good, we, we exist in a spirit of holiness. We exist in a mindset of doing God rewards our spirit first before he re rewards us openly. He blesses our spirit to grow within him, to reflect his spirit as we continue to do good and trust in God. So shalt thou dwell in the land and barely shalt thou be fed, opening our spirit 
to God, walking with God, doing good, being righteous, trusting in the Lord will feed our spirit to where we will not hunger. We, there will be a famine in the land and we will still eat, right? So there's a famine in the land of, of the word of God, of the nourishment of the word of God, the bread of life, because people are so consumed with darkness, they rather dwell in that place and they're not hearkening to the word of God. They are not hearkening to um, the salvation that is being told about Jesus Christ. So, um, and they are not communing with their spirit enough to even understand what is going on and how to proceed. This walk, this this time is so intricate. The things that a God is telling us to do is so intricate. What he is speaking to our spirit is so serious that we have to take the time to listen. We cannot dwell in the flesh. We cannot dwell around people who, who want to um, exist in an unclean spirit. We have to understand that being set apart means to set yourself apart. To go to, on your own and to be fed by the um, by God, by the scripture, by the spirit of God, by the power of God. So delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And a lot of us think that we desire physical things. We think that we desire houses and cars and money. But what we really desire, what we desire in our heart is peace and harmony and love for each other what we desire is to see a way forward to get out of the perils of spiritual warfare right and to feel like we are in the righteousness of god um in the in the okay so understand the righteousness of god is not like this uniform place the righteousness of god is a a correct path for our lives right according to the will of god we all have our individual walk we all have our individual purpose. But the righteousness of God is a uniform mindset, right? And then we walk into our spiritual purpose. Then we walk into our spiritual identity. But first, we have to get the basic instructions of righteousness. And then God can reveal more to us. Okay, delight thyself also in the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Meaning to stay in the realm of lord of god's will right and this is a hard part this is the hard part so that's why spiritual warfare will push you further and further into god's will because god speaks to us in so many ways he'll speak to us in trying to get us more on the right path um through spiritual warfare through exposing to us what we don't like what we how we don't want to feel and god is speaking to us trying to correct our behavior trying to correct our mindset so that he can use us more right and, and um, that is spiritual warfare. And then there's spiritual warfare like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening. What should I do? And then there's prayer, right? But if the spiritual warfare keep happening, then there's something that God is trying to speak to you in regards to turning around your mind and to turning around your existence and your uh, moral foundation. So delight, um, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday, right? So the noonday is like the, the, the sun is highest in the sky at noon, right? That's why it's called high noon. So the noonday will bring your light high, right? Will we'll make it bright. Will bring your understanding to a level where it can see, you can see, right? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So um, cease from anger and forsake wrath. So trying to remain calm, removing yourself, right? And this is how you know you are in spiritual warfare. When you are trying to have the best day ever, and you just can't get out of it. You can't get out of the pain, like the anger. Like you mad and you want to fight, right? And everybody that says something to you make you want to fight them. And that is spiritual warfare. So so these instructions in, um, in Psalms 37, 1 through... Um, okay, Psalm 37... Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, right? So separate yourself, calm down, rethink, find your way, right? Because your way and everybody else's way and your way is not the same way. So find your way because you have your issues, they have their issues. Love them through their issues, but figure out your own issues. 
so that you can calm your spirit. You calming your spirit is so important because that's where God can speak to you. And it's very hard to do that. And, um, and meditation, like we have to, as Christians, we have to stop rejecting things that are not out, that are outside of the Bible in regards to spirituality and our understanding. Like once we get the basic instructions, we know how to keep it clean when we look into other practices. So we can look into other practices, meditation and calming your mind. I'll share, um, one of my brothers sh shared a video with me today in regards to calming your mind. And it was um, based on scientific research of the human mind and so we have to like start looking into that because so many different things is coming up against us so my people perish for lack of knowledge is what is written in scripture so we have to be able to seek knowledge beyond um what has been given to us on the rock of jesus christ standing on the rock of jesus christ and understanding that all other um all other information and education is to be applied to the foundation in which we have established with our understanding of Christ, right? So um, next we're going to go to John 16, 17 through 23. So John 16, 17 through 23 says, Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, right? So Jesus was here, right? He was here. He did his thing. He did the miracles. He he told them about his power, then that his power came from God, and that he was sent to um, you know, to the lost sheep of Israel. And he told him all that he was telling them all these things, right? But he said, Because I go to the Father, right? So when Jesus um, was crucified and resurrected on the cross and went to go sit at the right hand of the Father. Then the Holy Spirit was sent out amongst to be the um, be the force that went about and made changes. So the Holy Spirit was available to all of us, his disciples and everyone else in humanity. So the purpose of teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is for people to come into the understanding of the Holy Spirit, how to gain the Holy Spirit, how to operate in a Holy Spirit. And Paul teachings, his epistles, and um, of his epistles showed us how the Holy Spirit should manifest, right? How it should manifest amongst us and exist amongst us. And over the weekend, we'll be going through the epistles of Paul to to get a further understanding of what should what should we see when we look out of society. How should we exist with one another? How should we exist between brothers and sisters in society? Right. They said, therefore, what is this that he has, he said a little while, we cannot tell what he said, right? So there's instruction that Jesus Christ has given us in scripture, right? But then there's spiritual warfare that comes up against that instruction. So in that moment, in that time, we have to call upon the Holy Spirit. We have to dwell in a Holy Spirit and we have to pray to God for direction. And we have to read our Bible to get that direction. So understanding that sometimes it's going to get hard, it's going to get rough as we go forth in righteousness, but we have a reference, a blueprint of reference in which we have to go back to, and it's going to be hard. It's not easy to grow in Christ. It's not easy to become, but as we become, as we press toward the mark, God blesses us in growth, in understanding, and, and that's what we have to press. We have to be able to look at our own selves and see our own downfalls and see where we are not operating in the full instructions in which God has given us. And we have to be able to be committed to making those changes so that we can see the glory of God on our lives. So um, they said, therefore, so now Jesus knew that they were serious to him, to ask him and said unto them, do ye inquire among yourselves of what I said? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me. Right? So they were like, yeah, like what are you talking about? So verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sor sorrow shall be turned into joy. Right? So this is what I'm talking about, about um, spiritual warfare. Those who are in darkness do not see what is going on in the world so they are just fall they are in the folly of it they are just chilling and then those who are in christ those who are trying to rock, walk a righteous walk those who are trying to be obedient to god we see it we feel it we we have an inkling of what's going on and we see past what's in front of us so we see the bigger picture we see spiritual warfare going on all over the world 
and in some ways we feel helpless right and in a lot of ways we are helpless because we can only do um so much god is in control god is in all powerful right so we labor and we lament and we weep against just like the weeping prophet jeremiah we are weeping in this place of a of of tell them right in this this place in between tell them what's going on tell them what's happening tell them about jesus tell them to repent right to this place where um somewhere in between dust off your feet and let it count it as a testimony but we don't want to leave people right we don't want to just act like it's nothing and just let people perish um for a lack of knowledge or a lack of understanding or a lack of wisdom or a lack of spiritual um soundness so then um eventually we'll get to the place where let the dead bury the dead and that is where that is the place where spiritual warfare becomes unbearable that is the place where spiritual warfare becomes a place where you can't even dwell you can't exist you can't be there with them right so um that is the place that we are coming to my love so we have to to mount up we have to get stronger in christ so that we can spread the word spread the gospel more um in a cohesive manner in a more cohesive manner in which we're being intentional and 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 unified in our messages unified in our understanding unified in our efforts okay so um so jesus says do you inquire among yourselves of what i said like why are you asking him and and why is he asking you like i I will give you the answer. I will explain it to you. And, and the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus Christ being left as a comforter with us is what we need to inquire, is what we need to, to grow us to get to an understanding. There is no questioning that you can do to question another man to give you the essence of information that God wants to give you. There is nothing that anyone can tell you to surpass what has been written in biblical scripture but the Holy Spirit. So, um, so he says, ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sh sorrow, sorrow shall be turned into joy. So there is a testimony, dust off your feet for a testimony against Christ. There is something coming. There is something going to happen. Just even just not, it's not like everything got to play out before you get the reward of God. God will reward you the next morning after a day of spiritual warfare. God will reward you in the next moment. In regards to peace and understanding and a spirit and a calmness in your spirit that surpasses everything that goes around you. And in that blessing, you can become a blessing. So we have to diligently seek the face of God, diligently seek the, the calmness of God's spirit to be able to be effective in serving humanity, to be effective in calming down our home, keeping spiritual warfare away from our family. So a woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. So Jesus was giving them an example of a childbirth in regards to him being, um, you know, uh, in regards to the disciples going through what they needed to go through in that hour, in that time, in that, in that season to birth the salvation of Jesus Christ on earth, to birth the purpose in which Jesus came on earth, right? A woman, when she's in travail, has sorrow um, because her hour has come. So like my brother was saying the other day, there's a fight. There is this fight against flesh um, and the Holy Spirit is fighting on our behalf. But we have to be able to um, be in touch with the Holy Spirit to be used by God to help fight, right? Or we will be consumed. We won't. We can't even fight on our own behalf because we are not paying attention and, and hearkening to the word of God by listening to, to um, gospel music, praying, opening up scripture, praying more, um, sitting with God. Like that is the point of this revival this weekend to get in as much um, teachings about God, teachings about Christ, understanding fellowship as we can to, to harness a consciousness that will surpass the spiritual warfare that's going on on earth. So um, the, we are in travail right now. We have sorrow. Um, her hour has come. The hour of Christ has come. The hour of change has come. So we have work to do. She remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. Right? So in the pursuit of um, Jesus Christ. In the pursuit of the salvation of Jesus Christ. There is sorrow. There is, is travail, there is lamentation, there is 
trying to come into an understanding. There is a fight, but this fight will set you apart. This fight will give you a joy that surpasses anything any man on earth can give you, right? And that is what um, Jesus is talking about in the scripture. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you, right? So when you are in Christ, when you are in God, when you are operating in a Christ-like spirit, when you are diligently seeking the face of God, then whatever you ask in the Father's name shall be, in, in Jesus' name of the Father shall be given to you, right? And in that day, and these verses not only speak to our own spiritual, um, our own spiritual, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, our own spiritual journey, but also the spiritual journey of society and humanity. It also represents um, that prophecy is to be fulfilled. But we have work to do to get it there. It's not something we just sit back and wait on, my love. It's something that we have to pray about, diligently seek, um, elevate our own consciousness so that we can elevate the consciousness of others. And I know that a lot of us are seeking an elevated consciousness through many different spiritual practices. But we have to get to the point of understanding that the elevation of our consciousness is not only for us, but for the entire world, for society, for humanity, as we are sent here as servants under God to make a difference, to have dominion over the earth and to dwell in the spirit of God in which he has created us to exist in. So, um, so that means there is more. So I have questions, right? Like, like when spiritual warfare is happening, I have questions like, am I doing, am I have questions like, was I wrong? Like we all have questions, like, especially when you're trying to be in a Christ like spirit, you like, was I wrong? And this is not bad, my loves. We have to get away from that prideful, conscious, or of an um, enlightenment to how you are supposed to be in God, right? And as you grow in Christ, as you grow in righteousness, you are able to understand that other side of that coin better. And you are able to teach those who are on the other side of the coin, even in a more clear conscious, in a more clear delivery of God's word. So um, we all are, it's all a process, right? So there is more healing to do, more understanding. To stand on the rock doesn't mean the salvation of the Lord has come. We are still in labor. We are still travailing. We must work um, while it's day because night is coming where no man can work. So um, we have to, I wrote this down, my last. So we have to, um, learn um to become learn and conquer obedience so so jesus right so man works right so jesus came he learned right when he was early in his life he learned about the old testament he learned about the scripture and then he um he did what he was supposed to do what in um god gave him to do he conquered that he did that he, in his obedience and then he died and then he was spiritually resurrected in the spirit so um our lives what we do here on earth will live on right it will live on to be a testimony to our lives but we have to do something my love we can't just live here and just think oh we're just gonna live here and die like we want to do that we were sitting here for a reason so we have to get it done we have to stand up we have to dig into our gifts we have to dig into who um, who we are at the core, like how God created us to be a blessing. And so I encourage you guys to journal and, and pray and, and think about your life and what good things God has put in you to be a blessing to many and not compare yourself to others, but walk in your truth and protect your spirit by growing in righteousness. That is the only way to protect your spirit is to grow in righteousness. So when, um, and it's not easy, it's not easy. So we have to um, let our flesh die, kill our flesh more and more every day to let it die for our righteousness to come forth. It is a hard, the way is narrow. It is not wide. We cannot try to enter through the wide gate because the, the way is narrow. God is doing a great work. Jesus Christ is, is not, is not in, you know, it's work to do. It's work to do. So we will be going through um, teachings of Paul this weekend. We will be going through the teachings of Jesus Christ. We will be going through the writings of um, biblical scripture in an effort to get an understanding that surpasses our earthly existence so that we can elevate our consciousness 
and be of service to humanity in a different realm of understanding. So that's all for this message. We're going to close, and I'm going to close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless this word to be a blessing to many, to change hearts and to open ears, Lord, to give your children spiritual ears and spiritual eyes to seek the truth of who you are beyond the illusion that is given to us on earth, to be all, to be knowing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light through seeking and finding, through knocking and the door being answered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for using me, Lord. Thank you for using us, Lord. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for changing us, Lord. There is spiritual warfare going on in the world, Lord, and I ask that you put a hedge of protection around those who are innocent, those who are meek, and those who are saved for your glory, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them and, and give them the comfort of the Holy Spirit to know that they are protected for a season to come, Lord, that 10,000 might fall at their right hand side and another thousand at their left, but they will prevail. They will go forward. They will be protected. They will abide under the shadow of the almighty Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your discernment. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your growth. Thank you for your freedom, Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you guys want to donate to the ministry, the link is in the description of this video. I love you guys so much. We will have more videos to come. Many blessings. Take care of your family. Eat well. Get some rest. Just, just try to be the best person you can be all the time, as much as you can, and allow God to grow you and seek righteousness and seek the face of God and dig into scripture and grow. Because that is what God is doing in this season. He is growing us. And spiritual warfare is necessary for growth. Blessings.